create a website design using the Bricks UI. We'll start the layout by creating a new document which is 1200 pixels in width and 2150 in height. By using the bucket tool, G, we will give it a background color of light gray. Apply some light noise to it. Filter, Noise, Add Noise. By using the Arial, or any other suitable font, type in the shop words. This will be our so-called logo type. Give it a dark blue color, and then apply a soft light gradient overlay effect with an opacity of 40%. I've also applied a one pixel drop shadow effect with the color set as white. At the right top of the layout, we will place our social media icons. I will create the circles by using the ellipse tool, and will use the icons from the icon set that comes along with the Bricks UI set. I'll give the hovered icon a blue color. The static circle's a gray one. and the icons a dark gray one.
I'll grab the menu at the top from the e-commerce UI number one section and we'll place it at the top. From the very same e-commerce number one set, I'll grab the slider and we'll place it under the navigation. The very best thing about the elements in the UI set is that they are already perfectly suiting our layout. The slider covers exactly three quarters of the layout. Just below the menu at the right of the slider, I'll place a checkout form which I got from the e-commerce number one as well. Right below the slider, I will create a section that we can put some emphasis on. I'll contain a headline and a call to action button which seems fine. The shape is 960 pixels in width and about 90 pixels in height. I will give it a fill of 70% and we'll apply an outer glow effect of three pixels in size and the opacity set to I'll also apply an inner shadow effect of one pixel in size and white color. Now, I'll browse through the set and we'll find any CTA button and we'll throw that one on our current document and we'll position it accordingly. I'll input some text on the shape we have just created. In the next steps, we will be inputting a bunch of various item widgets, all of which we'll get, again, from the e-commerce number one subset. Our first row of items will be the ones you can see on the screenshot, the well-designed widgets with sportswear items in them. We will continue by adding another row of items. This time I went with a set of three hoodies and a little bit different styling than the previous row of items. This will be our middle row of items for sale placed on the layout. We'll finish the item section with another row of lounges and seats items. If we take to compare the styling of the following widgets and the ones we've used before, then we can conclude that these are the most simple, but that makes perfect sense and does create a pleasant diversification on the page. Right before our footer zone, we will be adding a subscribe section where users can actually leave their email and receive regular newsletters. To create this section, we will rely on an already designed newsletter widget, which I found in the forms-ui number 2 PSD. The pre-designed widget has slightly shorter border patterns, but it's an easy job just to duplicate those or simply increase them in width.
The last step would be a small footer which we will create now. It is very simple and consists of a 5 pixel line which will give a light gray color and we'll place it just below the subscribe widget. By using the very same font, I'll write down a copyright line and I'll give it a dark gray color. Thank you for your attention.